Okay, and finally now we talk about Hellenistic Greece. Um, Hellenistic Greece, we have the age of Alexander the Great. Alexander's empire reached across many, many, many countries, all the way into India. But he was a particular lover of all things Greek. Okay, so he was not Greek, he was Macedonian. But his teacher was Aristotle. And Alexander spread Greek culture everywhere he conquered. Into Egypt, like I said, all the way into India. Certainly a huge influence as well on the Romans eventually. Alexander was quite smart. Understood the power of his own image and revered Greek art. But we have a very different type of art now from the classical age to this. We see an art that's very emotional. Okay, this is very different. This is an actual depiction, too, of Alexander. I told you before, the Greeks don't show real people. Well, they do with Alexander here, because in the Hellenistic Age, we have the emphasis on the individual and their feelings. Uh, here's a uh, beautiful mosaic piece, actually. and No, excuse me, it's a fresco in Pompeii. And you see Alexander here as the hero, and this, like, you know, you get this idea of his character. And now we have structures that have movement, like the Pergamon Altar. The Pergamon Altar has these reach, outreaching arms, and so now instead of that classical reserve, we have structures that are dynamic. They reach out into space. This was a temple dedicated to Zeus. And it's no more that feeling of very, very, you know, quiet, introspective characters. And they show things like, the boxer here, you know, he's broken nose, all the cuts on his face. And they show the feeling of the dying Gaul, the gladiator, who was slain. And here you see his sword. Uh, and it's the pathos of the moment. And the most famous one, of course, is the Loaquin. I've assigned a movie on the Loaquin. But please be sure you watch it because it's a really astonishing piece of art. Huge influence on Michelangelo. Uh, again, it's in the Vatican. I was just there. It's a beautiful work. But look at that very dynamic composition and the way the contrapposto of Loaquin, the high priest of Troy, is so intense. Uh, his face... Oops, I went the wrong way as he rise in agony after being bitten by the serpent that Hera sent to destroy Loaquin and his twin sons. And the story's in the movie, uh, but I just I have to show you, it's one of the most amazing pieces of art I've ever seen. Had, again, a huge influence on Michelangelo. Uh, they have determined, and it looks like when you actually see it, uh, this part of the arm was not in that position, but they glued that back on in the 16th century and people are afraid to take it off. It was probably down. But look at how exaggerated the musculature here is, you know. It's the arm, the bicep, and you see both heads and the triceps poking out. It's nothing like you would have seen in the classical age. Nothing. This is much more exaggerated, and it's all about the emotion. The classical world, very reserved. So don't forget, that's the difference between classical Greece and Hellenistic Greece. And it's an important difference. Look at his face. The pathos, the sorrow, as he knows he's dying, but worse, Troy is going to be defeated. So that's... The Greeks, they're really important, and as I was standing there looking at Loac the Loaquin piece, uh, my husband pulled me over and showed me this piece, and I had to share it with you all. Here he says, look at this guy. He's taking a selfie, so that was the end of my idea of Loaquin. I hope everybody's doing good, and this all made sense. Don't forget the Greeks, super important in Western culture and history. Peace out.